What I'm curious to see is how Loom interacts with the camera. Anyways, uh, if I can watch this video back in two times without Loom, that would be phenomenal. Here the thing is, is, you know, how do we get into the business, yada, 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 such and so forth. The idea is this video, hello everyone, my name is SLC, Sean Lee Chong, Sean Chong Lee, however you want to call me, I am a digital integrator. And basically what that is, is, you know, what the heck is going on, you know, what is this digital integration space, what are all these phone calls, what are all the scams, yada, 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 yada. I think what it is, is actually getting on a Zoom with someone and realizing, okay, what kind of value they have, but people are like fake, they're, they're going to put bots on their account, yada, 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 so on and so forth. Really just have to like figure out, you know, similar to the NFT space, the Discord chats, are the Discord chats genuine? So like, yes, hello, I am Sean, I run a digital uh, integration agency and SLC SMMA on Facebook pages group. Anyways, what I wanted to talk about was what the hell is making money online? What the hell is scaling online? What the hell is a yacht? What the hell is Airbnbs, you know, TikTok business, all this bullshit, right? What it is, is the internet changed everything. So give me a piece of paper and I'll, I'll explain why the internet changed everything. So here I have my notepad um, from college. And basically, if we're going to talk about what, like, you know, businesses and what the internet and how the internet changed everything, picture it like this. Back then, with my marker, if I wanted to, um, you know, ask a client to, hey, please buy my deal, I would have to send a pigeon. I would have to send a boat, a ship. I would have to, you know, go like two months on a boat to go say, hey, here's a pound of gold. Can you please sign this contract? And what happened is the person would have to travel from point A to point B just to sign the contract, right? So let's say that, let's say at the bottom, there's a place to sign the contract, right? So um, this is back then, right? It's a two months, right? It took two months for someone to get to a location just so then they could do this, draw a line on the bottom and say, yes, I agree to the contract. And then they would sign it. Boom, boom. It took them two months to get from point A to point B to sign that contract. So then the person that they're doing can, you know, do the, the service for them, make books, make newspapers, you know, 200 years ago, whatever advertisement they had, newspapers, print, you know, in the 19th century, I'm not quite sure. Anyways, what I am trying to say, the internet changed everything. Now, instead of having to write down, yes, um, you know, yes, I want to do the product with you, what the person, all they have to do is go on DocuSign, type in a couple letters, send it, and boom, they sign a contract, 1.5 seconds, right? It took 1.5 seconds, it took one second, literally, just to send it immediately, and then the person can sign a contract digitally, and then boom, let's do the service together. Now, the reason why video is way better is because when you read a mundane, copyright, long-ass, 20-page bullshit contract, there's the, you know, if one thing happened, we had to give all the money back. If one thing happened, we need to credit, credit all the money back. If one thing happened, yada, yada, yada. The reason why video is very, you know, accessible and much keener is you can listen in the background, you can see my hands, you can see, hey, Sean's a real person, like I'm not talking to a bot, right? And so I think instead of, you know, writing this long ass contract, you know, and the terms and the conditions, those are all important. I'm not saying I don't have a 30 page contract. I need to have one, I'm a business owner, right? I'm not saying I don't have a 50 page contract, a 100 page contract, yellow pages, right? It's not that I don't have them, I, I, I have them, right? But like essentials, bare minimum, bare, bare minimum, prospects, whatever. We're trying to scale to the moon, right? To Mars. Elon Musk trying to get to the Mars. Elon Tusk. Elon Musk. Excuse me. Elon Musk is trying to get to the Mars, right? He's trying to get to a different multiplanetary situation. We don't have time for BS, right? So cut the BS. Nowadays, the contract, right, in a, in a, in, in, in a couple months, a couple years, right? The blockchain, the NFT space, right? Video format. The contract... Is gonna be a video. So instead of me having to send, you know, where's the piece of paper? Here, here. Uh, give me something like here. Instead of me having to send, you know, a whole contract that's, you know, a, a small a small book. Here, read my contract, right? Here's a small book. This is the contract now. And then the same idea. The signature. The signature. Instead of this. Transform the typing on a computer. 
that's gonna disappear too. The contract is no longer gonna, gonna the, the, the world has changed and the internet changed everything. And now because of COVID, the video virtual reality platform has changed everything. The blockchain changed everything. The reason why actual writing down and typing contracts are not going to be verifiable anymore because a scammer could identify as me and write down SLC. A scammer could identify as me and write down Chong Li Chong on the DocuSign, I could lose all my money. The reason why video format is going to change everything is the actual contract will be a video. Hey, I'm Sean. Welcome to the SLC Digital Integrator Agency, SLC SMMA on Facebook pages. Anyways, yada, yada, yada. Like, welcome to the business, welcome to like everything. Boom, this is the video contract I'll be sending out. Then level two, the person, the prospect, the salesperson that wants to do business with me, right? Instead of having to, you know, fly a pigeon, you know, 3,000 miles over the Atlantic, over the Pacific, instead of having to, you know, take one second to type something because for some reason typing is a lot of work. They would just hold the button on their, you know, whatever, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, on their iPhone 12, right? Literally hold the button. They would just hold the button, right? I don't have my phone with me, but here, we'll just pretend that um, my deodorant is my phone. So, like, my deodorant's my phone, okay? I'll literally hold it, say, hey, Sean, I saw your video. Um, let's do business together. This is the contract because screw typing and screw writing. Here's a video format, you know, now person to person. Yada yada, hit send, I'll get the video. Oh, you know, so-and-so wants to do this with me. I'll send a video back. Hey brother, like how you been? Like I'm digitally integrated, like, let's get on a call together. That's gonna be the confirmation contract back and forth rather than having to send a pigeon 3,000 miles over the Atlantic or because some people are too lazy to sign a DocuSign. But also, like I said, scammers and stuff like that can easily just identify as Sean, type SLC, hit sign, I could lose all my money. You know what I mean? And so in terms of like what this video is and like, I just want to say everyone, hello, welcome to the SLC SMMA, Social Media Marketing Agency. Welcome to the SLC Digital Integrator. So I'm a digital integrator and what that is, is at scale, what we're doing is using automation to scale businesses. So in perfect example would be Airbnbs, yachts, you know, apartment buildings for real estate, cruise ships like the Caribbean, so on and so forth. It's how do we reduce the barrier to entry? How do we reduce the time frame? And how do we increase the imaginatory system of the prospect and clients? So what I mean by that is increasing barrier to entry, one press of a button on their phone, time delay, one press of a button on their phone, and then boom, you have six pack apps. Imagine every health program out there, as soon as you purchase the health program for $200, your six pack abs show up, boom, everyone would buy that because the time delay is not there. So the reason why Airbnb is so powerful is subconsciously, humans don't like their life. Like let's think about it, 80 to 90% of people hate their lives because they wake up, go to school, fucking hate school, go to work, fucking hate work, and then go to sleep in their you know cheap house because they don't have enough revenue or liquidity because then, then they spend money on, a, on an expensive car that they spent uh, 10 years hitting a job and they buy this car and then the car breaks and then they're sad because they spent 10 years that they, they traded time for money, you know what I mean? Anyways, what I'm saying is people want to escape that. They want to escape their nine to five bullshit life that they I look at Airbnbs, look at Caribbean, look at cruise ships, what that does is imagine a complete app, one app. So this is the digital integrator's job. Client fulfillment, client onboarding process, time delay decrease, and then into the imaginatory subconscious. What I'm saying is imagine one app that an individual could press plane ticket plus cruise ship ticket plus Airbnb plus Trivago, TripAdvisor, everything exclusive with one press of a button and then only 2.5K. Uh, you know what I mean? So like imagine a whole vacation of two weeks planned out just for $5,000, you press the button on your phone and then boom, it. whoever is on the other side of that sees the message, oh, so-and-so from California wants to go on a trip in New York, Trivago, TripAdvisor, you know, plane ticket, cruise ship, everything, in two weeks package, press press send, uh, hello, uh, hello, confirmation email, Congratulations on your 5k purchase of the next best experience of your life and then the person's excited because the 
the, the, the value of imaginatory. Yes, I get to escape my bullshit 9 to 5 job. Yes, I get to leave my life, right? So then what happens is people are willing to trade, you know, all the time that they invested, all the money into having a great vacation. So digital integration is important because at scale, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people want this, right? Client fulfillment. Hundreds of thousands of people want to scale their business. Hundreds of thousands of people are below their profit margins of where they want. You know, even having 25 plus profit margins of your revenue is crazy. Think about it. If there was a CEO that made, you know, $10 million a month or $10 million, you know, a year or whatever, plus 25% profit margin is insane. And it's hard to get to that point because the CEO is just burning fires all day. Small emails here and there, like, you know, CEOs, they're just like, it's just putting out fires all day long. The client wants to, you know, do a cashback. Client wants to yada, yada, yada. There's just too much confusion. What automation allows us to do is over deliver. So let's say Zapier, Linktree, HubSpot, MailChimp, Slack, all the customer relation managers. What we'll do is just automate everything. So when clients have questions, we'll just send them like FAQ and the FAQ would have like a thousand questions. Literally every possible question on the FAQ. What does FAQ even stand for? Frequently asked questions. What is digital integration? Yada, yada. Even down to like, hey, how could I improve my health? That could be like the 999th point. Want to improve your health? Become a digital integrator, right? And so, it's actually, I mean, you know, get better sleep, drink water, such and so forth. But what I'm saying is, why is that important? Is the market doesn't give a fuck about anybody. <laughs> like, I understand, like, you know, talk about language, talk about, like, you know, the, the way we talk. If you really think about it, the market, like, holistically, the world, in terms of money and revenue and profit, you know, the market doesn't give a fuck about who you are. Alex Hermosi talked about this. What he said is, success is colorblind. It's the same as cancer. Cancer is colorblind. Anybody can get cancer. Um, success is colorblind. Anyone can be, you can be an absolute asshole and like call everyone like, you know, like just be so stuck up. So like just push everyone else around you down. Be super negative. Just be like, oh, no one else is as good as be the, the no, most narcissistic, most asshole like person out there. But you do the actions of, you know, networking and promoting your merch networking and promoting you know a vitamin or products so as a person the individual could be a complete bitch right a complete asshole but because success is colorblind they did the actual actions of promoting whatever product or service they want to sell and then people needed value in that that they were able to scale their business now you know obviously the universe and karma i'm not to say that being an asshole is the way that you know karma can hurt them and the universe would hurt them but what i am saying is like you know, imagine someone that had the right intentions, so like was a good human being, someone with the right intentions, organic outreach, they were a genuine human being, face to face, you know, this is a video format, but like if I could do a presentation for 100,000 people, I would, like, I want to be in front of people like, yes, I am a human being, you know, so, or, so being an actual human being, you know, organic outreach and automation at scale, what that allows is success just becomes um like we're, we're you know grant cardone talks about this he said if technology doesn't make your life easier don't use it and so with that being said like as a business owner we can literally leverage you know zapier and um automation at such a scale because in terms of systems uh, you could already have a system of waking up and then the first hour of the day is just client fulfillment. Why would you spend an hour of client fulfillment when you could have spent an hour on automation and then have that client fulfillment just be done already every single day automatically? Then that one hour that you spend on client fulfillment daily could be one hour thinking, okay, if automation already works, how could I scale even further? Maybe my market isn't right. Maybe my, you know, Maybe doing a niche in real estate is working, but I want to go even bigger. Maybe I need to find apartment buildings. Maybe I need to buy yachts. Maybe I need to buy cruise ships. You know, maybe I need to buy a whole ass island in order to increase equity and increase profit shares, right? And so what also is interesting is like the concept of delegation. And I think a lot of people are scared to delegate because 
it's a it's a deficiency. It's a trait and skill deficiency. If I were to delegate to someone, I want to teach them everything that I know so that if they do the exact things that I did because it worked, then I can trust them. But what happens is we're not able to delegate because as an entrepreneur, like me, like I'm the CEO of this digital integrator agency, right? Like as the CEO, as the individual human being entrepreneur, unfortunately there are deficiencies in like we, where we are. And so it's, it's, not a, it's not an issue, but like let's say if I want to train someone, I didn't have the necessarily skills to be able to delegate, you know, whatever I was doing. That's when you introspect and do uh, like a uh, introspection, you know, uh, what you could say an evaluation, right? <laughs> Let me evaluate myself to, you know, where are my weaknesses? Where are my deficiencies? Quadruple down, for, you, know, uh, you know, like octagon, right? Octaton down, quadruple down, what uh, 10 sides uh, of a polygon, you know, decagon down, whatever. 10 times down, 100 times down on those weaknesses, you know, be ruthless about the failures, right? Progress through persistence. So progress through persistence, no matter how many times we, it's a, super, it's, it's a Super Mario effect. So as an individual, as an entrepreneur, I already visualize where I am, you know, on this big cruise ship, helping thousands of clients, you know, with automation and just having them put their value out and the best information out with one video that sends to all platforms, one email that sends to all platforms that gives the clients not just this much information, but like, you know, over deliver, right? Grant Cardone talks about this. You want to be more successful? Over deliver. So in this video, right? Like, you think it's enough? Just keep, just keep giving value. Just keep giving value. Tony Robbins, he talks about this. How to, you know, how, uh, Tony Robbins, with an S at the end. Tony Robbins talks about this. How do I increase generational wealth to have a business that would last a thousand years. Even Grant Cardone talks about this. Those real estate properties that he have are going to be there for 200 plus years. But what Tony Robbins says is consistently bring value. And it's like, well, what does that mean? You know, if we were to define what value is, is to decrease pain. So here, let me write this down. So if we're talking about what value is, okay, it is to one, Decrease pain. So, let me write this down. So, value. So, decrease pain. Okay. Number two, decrease the time. It gets to decrease pain. So, decrease time. Remember earlier, the, the idea I talked about, the Airbnbs, you only have to press one button on your phone. And then boom, you lose $5,000. I get $5,000, but the whole system is there for you. You know, you decrease pain because you know you're gonna be able to escape your nine to five bullshit job. You know, decrease the time. It only took one press of a button. And then finally, the desired outcome. Is most to more likely. So the third one is the actual realistic outcome of happening. Outcome is most or more likely to actually happen. So, you know, for someone who wants to buy an Airbnb, it's like, oh, that has already happened. I know what an Airbnb is. I know what an airplane is. I know what, you know, escaping my, mind, my nine to five bullshit job is. I know what a hotel is. I know what a yacht is, right? So it's like, the, the, the customer already knows what they're buying. The problem is, the, like, they're scared to buy it because it's like, it's so hard to, like, it's, it, it, it's hard to plan a trip. So there's even pain in planning the trip, right? So we decrease the pain of planning the trip. And then it takes a lot of time. You have to call up your wife, gotta call, you know, gotta tell the kids, hey, you got school on this day. You know, when's your spring break? All right, you know, uh, my second kid's spring break doesn't line up with my first kid's spring break. When's your summer break? My first kid's summer break doesn't line up with my second kid's summer break. My wife has work, you know, I gotta drop the third kid off at the um, daycare center, you know? So it's like, there's all these different things of planning versus if you press one button and it plans all of it for you and says, hey, in actuality, this app is gonna tell the schools that, hey, my son's needed a vacation right now. And even though the spring breaks don't line up, we're just gonna delegate the school 
to have him do the homework on the day that we come back. And the app does all of it for you. Again, decreasing the pain of planning, right? Let's say the wife has work. The app will message the workers at the work. Hey, you know, let the wife take a break. Decreasing pain, right? Even as the person planning it, let's say that I'm the husband planning the thing. I have to look at all the hotels in the area. Look at all of the boats and all the yachts in the area. Versus the one single app or the, you know, that, we're, that we're creating, like Caribbean has an app. Why Caribbean doesn't just work with American Southwest? Why doesn't uh, Caribbean work with Trivago? Why doesn't Caribbean work with TripAdvisor? That all the companies can merge together and then call it the Yes app, the Escape 9 to 5 and Go on Vacation app. Call it the Vacation app. Then the individual that wants to do it presses on the app and then everything's already planned. That increased the time delay to get them to their, what they wanted was to plan the vacation, increase the pain of planning so then they don't have to message all the school teachers, message their workplace to take work off, message the daycare center, right? Decreasing the time delay, decreasing the pain, and then finally, the desired outcome, which is a bomb-ass time on the Caribbean cruise ship, a bomb-ass time on a yacht, and what happens is the person has already seen it. They know that those things exist because they've seen it it's all over the all over the TV, all over the media. Millionaires have these big jets, you know, billionaires have these big yachts, whatever, such and so forth. The individual has already seen the desired outcome, which is having a great time on that vacation because the advertisement shows it. And so in terms of bringing insane, 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 insane amounts of value, right here, write this on our foreheads, right? How do I provide value? Decrease pain, decrease pain, decrease time delay, decrease time delay and then allow the desired outcome, right? In human, imagine, uh, human imagination, human imagination, human motivation, human inspiration, human exploration, right? All the human shuns, human solutions, human decreasing painions, right? Human, you know, uh, what is it? Humans escaping the nine to five bullshit eons, whatever you wanna talk about it, okay? What I'm saying is digital integration allows, like if I go on Zapier, what I'll do with Zapier is, let's say, let's say um, for client fulfillment or client onboarding process, so many fucking steps, way too many steps. You have to go into the Zoom. Then the person has to explain everything to you. Then you have questions about how this works. And then you just say, blah, 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 blah. Versus if I use Zapier, I would send the individual to Calendly this, or even SurveyMonkey. SurveyMonkey and Calendly are essentially the same thing. So like this, I would send a link to the individual. The person presses the link. The link sends them into a click funnel. The click funnel sends them into Calendly or SurveyMonkey. And then the questions are like, hey, like what's your business? What's your you know, net worth? Like, or what's your profit margins? Where do you wanna be? What are your obstacles? X, Y, and Z, what, what's your niche? Like, are you real estate? Are you yachts? Are you a gym owner? Are you fitness? It doesn't matter, right? Digital integration is everything, okay? So then Calendly or SurveyMonkey, they fill out 10 questions. I'll read it. Maybe I'll ask them to send a video like this, like, hey, please send a video. Then what'll happen is as the individual sends the video and da 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 da, da you know, the, what the Zap does is it sends them to ClickFunnels, sends them to SurveyMonkey, sends them to da 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 sends them to my website, then sends them to an email, sends them to a webinar, sends them to a da-da-da-da-da, okay? A, 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 you know, a masterclass even, okay? So that's eight, that's like 10 to eight steps already on Zapier or, you know, HubSpot, Linktree, whatever you want to use. Then by the time the person, right? By the time we get into the meeting together, like, hey, I'm Sean, welcome to the meeting, right? I already know what the problem is. Let's say it's real estate. Oh, the reason why you're not scaling from 10 mil to 100 million, you just don't have enough units. So let's look at the, where the worst country, I mean, where the worst spots are. Like, people are immigrating from LA to Las Vegas. People are uh, migrating from LA to Texas. People are moving from Georgia to Louisiana, from Louisiana to Georgia, from South Carolina to Indiana, from Indiana to Chicago, from wherever. And like, we'll, 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 like, we'll look at the market, we'll look at where the locations are and go, oh, the reason why I'm only at 10 mil and not 500 million or a billion is because not that I don't have enough you know, units, I have 20 plus apartment buildings, 
are giving me, you know, you know, plus 300 mil per month or, or year. The problem is location and market. So check this out, check this out, check this out. Yes, you can own 20 apartment buildings. That's, that, that, that's fine, right? The only way to get to, uh, you know, from 300 mil to 1 billion is to just increase apartment buildings. Yes, that's true. Yeah, like, yes, that's true. However, quality over quantity. I'm gonna have a much more stressful time managing 100 apartment buildings for me to be a billionaire. I don't want that. Versus, let me find the most high paying 20 apartment buildings in Korea, in uh, Singapore, in Dubai, in the UK, in Australia, you know, in South America, in NA, in Canada, in wherever the biggest apartment buildings, right, are in the world. Um, and so what that allows is instead of 100 apartment buildings in the US, let me do five in Dubai, let me do five in Australia, let me do five here. And what you realize is quality over quantity and the, the actual like clientele or the prospects you're recruiting because they're making more money than the average apartment real estate investor or owner, then you get to learn from people that are making more money from you, but also it's international currencies, right? And so, you know, if you're in Forex, you can even be trading internationally, buying stocks internationally that are gonna help you scale your money even further. Why, why asking for high ticket clients is actually better is because high ticket clients know what the hell they're talking about. Does that make sense? Like, like it's actually counterintuitive if you think about it. People think, oh, like, I gotta start small with like, you know, the like six, seven figure or C CEOs so I can build up my reputation to get to a billion. No, ask a billionaire right away because they already know what their problem, billionaire already knows what they want. Like if I'm doing something for 40 years and it's been working and I'm a billionaire, every single day I'm just compressing, every single day I'm just optimizing and giving value. That's literally all I'm doing. 24 seven, compressing, optimizing, and then giving value. As If I were a billionaire, that's all I'd be doing, 24 seven. And so the billionaire million, they already know, like they, 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 LASIK, they already know, right? What the fucking issue is. They just don't have fucking time. There's no time, dude, there's, there's, there's no time. And so what that happens is, you know, SMMA agency, digital integrators, just like us, the hungry, the hungry, who not only do we want the bag, but we also want to help. We also want to make an impact. By the time we get on those meetings, both of us, you know, the digital integrator, myself, or the individual that's watching this, I know you're inspired to learn what digital integration is, it's gonna be like, by the time you get on the CEO call, you're both already gonna be in the same headspace. Well, profit margins are like this. Well, you know, you, like, you have an, a, 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 you know, a 4,000 units in, in Dubai, what if you put 2,000 units in Dubai and then 2,000 units in, 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 in uh, New Zealand? Like, let's, let's, like, let's play test. Let's see what the numbers are. So the clientele, the bigger the clientele is, not only am I going to get more bag, right? But also, I'm going to learn so much more. Like, I don't want to get on a call with, like, you know, a six-figure earner and they're still picking up scraps and they're still, like, optimizing. Like, let me get with someone that already is in the business and they're just, like, they're learning about how to automate and how to digitally integrate. But I'm also learning, like, oh, how do I run a 10-figure business? Like, in, in, in real time. You know what I mean? So it's like, what rubs off on you? Like, mirror neurons, who you want to be spend time with, that kind of concept. Why would you settle for a six and a figure like in terms of the outreaching process and the organic process within our mental capacity if i aim for 10 11 you know amazon is 1.6 trillion right now if i aim for the the, the the trillion dollars and quadrillion dollars right up 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 you know octillion dollars centillion like centillion googleplex an infinite amount of money if i aim for that automatically my brain the RES, right, the articulating activating system. We're looking for those opportunities everywhere. And so what happens is we start to realize, okay, the CEO is a human. I am a human. What is time? What is energy? What is health? What is delegation? You know, all these different things. 
what starts to happen is not only are we worrying about money and finance or whatever, whatever, if you realize, wait, in order for me to keep up with all this work and all these tasks, I should have to optimize the systems within myself. So morning routines, right? Nighttime routines, health, exercise. These things become easier because the market doesn't give a fuck about you, right? So if the market doesn't care, what you got to do is outwork your self-doubt. How do you outwork your self-doubt? I think there's finesse. I don't think this, you know, work 16 hours a day, like work till your nails fall off, work till your eyes bleed. You know, maybe there is some, like if you're just starting out and you're complete like pussy and you never actually like strained yourself to work really hard before and you're just like, oh, like, because no one told me to study and yeah, and, and, and if you never push yourself, you know, to the brink of exhaustion of work before, then like, you know, after you're getting to that point, you realize, okay, I can still do, you know, I can still get to this point, but with finesse. So check this out. Rather than getting 16 hours of work done and then being fucking gassed at the end of it, what if I worked on my own self, self-improvement, weightlifting, eating healthy, learning how to study more, human motivation, that those 16 hours actually feel like two or three because self-improvement. So rather than increasing the workload, it is increasing your capacity to work. Does that make sense? The reason why school and everyone else is like scared or whatever, because the school system gave you an outline. The school system is an assembly line, you know, fifth grade through eighth grade. It's an assembly line. Like, hey guys, do math. Hey guys, do science. Hey guys, do this. It's, it's, it's an assembly line. So our brain, our capacity thinks, oh, my success is only how can I succeed at doing the schoolwork? That's success. Schoolwork really only lasts, let's say, school day is what, six hours, but you're really only doing homework for like maybe two or three hours because we're not really paying attention in class because we don't care. When you go home, you're not really doing homework. And when you are doing homework, you're not really paying attention to do your homework. You just want to like go play video games or whatever. And when you do your homework, it's like half-assed or whatever. So six, eight hour work, uh, school day, more like you're actually doing only homework for two hours and you're wasting all your time on social media. So like you're wasting six hours in a day. You see what I mean? So like you're not working eight hours in a school way, like in a school day, even at work, like a nine to five job, you're not working the full eight hours. You're talking to your friends, like you see what I mean? And so the work capacity is not eight hours of work or however long the school day is. That's not your work capacity. Does that make sense? And so that's why when like an entrepreneur is like, well, how can, how can they fuck they, can they work for so long? It's because throughout high school and throughout the entrepreneurial journey, they didn't worry about bullshit. They just worried about what is the most important, what, how can I optimize, and went full throttle, right? And so what I'm saying is rather than worrying about the amount of work that needs to be done, what if we were able to delegate and focus on increasing our capacity past the threshold of task loads, capacity. So within that idea of eight hour school day, right? Eight hours of work, eight hours of work, right? It's not eight hours of work. It's like three or four or six or whatever. Um, anyways, in that eight hour work day, your work capacity is between like six to eight hours. So then when you go back home, you just want to rest and sleep and eat and be lazy. Versus human motivation, you know, increasing my capacity to work, having actually fun while studying, having actual fun and doing what I actually want to do, right? Then our capacity to work increases tenfold. It goes from six hours to 16 hours. But even then, even after, like myself, even after I study for whatever, you know, a two or three hour study session, I'll feel like, hey, that was nothing. Because of human motivation, because of having fun, because of the power of why, like, I'm studying because I want to get out the rat race. I'm studying because I, I, I want to get out of the middle class. I'm studying because I want to be in the top 0.01%. Like, I want to be in the 0.01%. I want to be, right? And so if that's the case, rather than, oh, I need to do a thousand assignments in a day, but I only have a six hour work capacity. And I'm scared because the school system said a D was bad. No, D for damn, bro. Let me commit to other things because maybe school's not for me. You ever thought about that? And so what I'm saying is like, what happens is success is not an actual material thing. It's an identity. As of right now, you know, in terms of liquidity and, and you know, and, and in terms of, like, in, in terms of liquidity, 
that's obviously personal information. But what I'm saying is, they can like a lot of you talk. About, I think success is an identity, millionaire, billionaire, da da da. Rather than in a certain situation, oh, I don't have motivation, oh, I'm tired. I could just ask myself, well, what could a billionaire do? What could a billionaire do? A billionaire can work for 12 hours, no stop. So if that's the case, and if I want to be one, then I would just copy exactly what they're doing, replicate, learn from their mistakes, quadruple down those mistakes, right? But anyways, I'm going to leave everyone with this. It's a very long video, but there's hella content in this. Um, and this is all free. Like This is literally distribution at scale. So here you go. Value, decrease pain, value, decrease time it takes to decrease pain, value, the desired outcome is most or more likely. So we need to get all of this in. Thank you for watching.